so thanks for for inviting me um really sort of my driving force is education for professional development allowing learners from whatever backgrounds to succeed realize their ambitions and goals but also taking that forward to education for sustainable uh, development so Leeds has a institution policy that everybody, regardless of uh, discipline, has to do a final year project. Um, have we got something wrong with the? Is that white to me? Because that looks grey. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. It's probably where I'm standing. Um, so everybody has to do a final year project. Um, I have two issues with that: the the research bit and also the combination bit. So in the biosciences, historically. We've done a, you know, a lab-based project, field work, or a, a crit review. But only a minority of our students are going to careers in research. If you look at the QAA benchmark statements or the R creating bodies, again, we can do much more than that. Are these uh, lab-based projects field work inclusive? Should we be thinking about the, the project as a transition into the workplace, not an endpoint assessment? and thinking about how we can better prepare our students for the 21st century workplace, really the global graduate. So what we really need to do is to rethink the purposes and practices and outcomes of the final year project. And it's an opportunity to address awarding gaps, to um, increase, increase diversity inclusion for all groups, or, or all minority groups, and also to, to uh, develop cultural competencies. So the you know, solution for this is the capstone project, capstone experience. So this was introduced by uh, George Cole in uh, 2008. It's one of the 11 high impact educational practices. So it was designed for the pick and mix program uh, in the US where a student on the same program might be doing totally different courses to another, so uh, to integrate their experience. So a culminating experience which requires students to create a project of some sort that integrates and applies what they have what they've learned. So the capstone experience in the US is quite conservative. It's a senior seminar series, it's an extended essay, it's a service learning experience. As a, a sector, we're not fully realizing the full transformative, so that's uplifting skills or translational, so uh, preparation for the workplace potential of capstones. So I've rethought it and thinking about it as a inspirational, transformative and translation education experience where learners bring together knowledge and skills gained from earlier in their programs and applying these to a problem. It can be research, but doesn't have to be. And they're developing new knowledge and skills in creating a solution or output to, to that problem. So the focus is not on research experience as a traditional uh, project, but more on developing competencies and a broader workplace experience. So over the last 15 years, in the same course or module, I've created uh, 16 different opportunities for my students. We have traditional an expanded portfolio of traditional research projects for those that want to go into careers in research or those need, uh, careers that need research skills. For those that want to use their science in a scientific environment, but outside, uh, uh, outside of research, we have a different portfolio of opportunities. And for those that want to use their science in the broader community, we have our social justice capstones. So we've always thought by having this broad portfolio of opportunities, it's inclusive. There's something for everyone. Each one develops different you know, skills, competencies, uh, provides different experiences, etc. But the question is, really, was it? So we, what we've done is, or actually, um, Stephanie, who was a, a Q-Steps history intern, um, analysed our data from the last four years. So this is about 800 students. Now, if we look across all those different formats of capstones, the mean mark is exactly the same. But what is more important is the learning gain. How much has they increased their, you know, their learning compared to uh, level five marks? If we look at the, the top uh, left, 
you know, if we take the, the, the learning gain from all the other theory modules at level six, excluding the capstone, there is, as you'd expect, some learning gain from, le from level five. If we look at the capstone on its own, the learning gain is five times, sorry, three times higher. So this is what you'd expect or what you'd like to see because they're applying knowledge um, from it. If we then break it down to look at different sections of our communities, there's no difference in learning gain between males and females. If we look at the bottom in ethnicity, there's no difference in learning gain between uh, white UK and UK ethnic minorities. There's an increase in learning gain in international students, which is great. If we look at WP, wide participation, if we look at the WP, one participation students against non WP students as a whole, there is no difference in learning gain. If we look at split that down to look at uh, those that are coming through our Leeds Learning Centre, um, again, no difference in learning gain. There is a, a difference in learning gain, a decrease in learning gain for um, access to lead students. So this is our, our scheme for students that are uh, from socioeconomic deprived areas uh, within Leeds. Um, we don't have the data to actually start to break that down to see which particular students are, you know, have they actually uh, taken up the opportunities when they get to Leeds, uh, et cetera. But it's something we need to look into. What we have done though, is to think how we can benefit as building on what Nick said, how we can benefit the entire community, not just specific groups. So it's think, you know, so students for us all choose their capstone based on their individual developmental needs or career intentions. We thought about inclusivity in the design and organization. So we've moved away from defined projects to client briefs. So it's a task. It's up to them how they solve that task. We, most of ours are team-based opportunities. So they can you know, bring, bring in their lived experiences into that team environment. We've changed the allocation message. So instead of doing it by rankings, et cetera, now it is very much that they, they, they say, select their briefs and then say what they, why they want to do a particular brief, what they individually want to get out of it. And we select by that method rather than, than marks. We brought in design thinking in the whole projects. So again, you know, it's divergence to think about ideas and then convergence to bring the team's ideas together. We thought about inclusivity in assessment. So they have the choice of assessment, their primary assessment. It can be an academic paper, it can be an e-portfolio, it can be a grant proposal, it can be a technical report, whatever. The one that best is most suited for their individual capstone format, but also the one that best showcases their skills, attributes, etc., to future employers. Critical to the whole thing is giving learners agency. So we brought in all those things for inclusivity, which again gives learners agency, but we rethought relationships. So it's no longer supervisor and student, it's mentor and mentee, and allowing mentees to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. We talk about teams rather than groups. So it's not an individual work on the same project, it is you know, a true team team execution, team design, team ownership of the outputs, etc. But also we can build in um, community based you know, it, it interventions as well. So more social justice opportunities. So community based, culturally responsive, experiential learning opportunities. And we can turn a lot of these different activities into those uh, exper community based experiential learning opportunities. So think about what we want to get out of them. We want a culture responsive education. We want to develop multicultural, global cultural competencies in all our students, not just in particular uh, groups. So those that are coming from particular backgrounds can build on the lived experiences. Those that are, might become from more privileged backgrounds can be immersed in these different cultures and communities and learn from that immersion process. So the typical way of doing this is outreach or public engagement. So we have carousels of students going around primary schools, 
going around uh, secondary and high schools, delivering interactive science-based workshops. We've taken it broader into the broader thing of public engagement. So they, they deliver sessions at local community fairs, um, museums, agricultural shows, etc. But that immersion into the community gives them an insight into the local community. But critical of this, it is not a one-way process. It's engagement rather than communication. So they are learning, both parties are, are learning from it. We have a broad range of stakeholders. So we go into the socially economic deprived areas. We go into the areas of high uh, migrant communities. We go into all these different areas. So they're building that cultural competencies up by, by engaging in these uh, activities. But we can also think about deeper engagement with the community by some of the you know, other formats of capstones, so the industry and science focused capstones. So they could, for example, be contributing to ongoing community activities. They could be co-creating with the community new activities. They could be specifically developing areas or activities where the community or the NGO or whatever lacks resource or expertise. Could be doing a consultancy function, they could actually be scoping out new areas of activity for, for these groupings. Critical to a lot of, of community groups is the, you know, is, is funding. It's a specialist task. So students can be discovering funding opportunities, writing that grant proposal. By talking to the community, by engaging them, looking at challenges and needs, et cetera, as well as a benefit the community of potentially getting the grant they are developing their own sort of cultural competencies by learning about that community they could be doing scientific or prescribed forms of writing but i think really to develop the uh, global cultural competencies and graduates we need to move about to what helen was talking about early today of the transnational education experiences where students are working on global challenges or UN sustainable development goals. So this is where we bring in our grand challenges capstones. So the task for the team is to provide evidence driven reports contain frugal solutions smart recommendations for a challenge or SDG relevant to a particular country in, in the global south. So immediately we're addressing education for sustainable development, we're addressing equality, so equity, diversity, inclusion, and decolonization. So last year we had two groups. We had a group that I led that was looking at the challenges facing drug development in Uganda. We had another group looking at diabetes therapies in Kuwait. So this was very much a, a UK looking down. Um, they did benefit my group that had an African student with them. So the UK students would come up with these solutions and the African students say, well, that's not going to work. You know, the clinic's 100 kilometers away. We don't have a fridge and all those sort of things. I have a lot of colleagues, uh, collaborators in, in Africa. So the one in Uganda actually ran a sort of semi-structured interview uh, with, with my students. Again, broadening their horizons. So they, they actually got a huge benefit from, from that engagement. Um, and really sort of develop that, that, that cultural awareness. But we've, we've taken this one stage further this year. Um, so we have groups of students who are about to start a partnership with Helen's University, the, the uh, Nigerian Open, you know, the Open, National Open University of, of Nigeria. And to really thank Helen now publicly for her collaboration and her, her willingness to engage uh, in this opportunity. For it to work, it really has to be a, a collaborative and equitable learning partnership. It is going to be challenge, you know, as Helen said, her students were fearful, my students are equally the same. And I think our first session is going to be not neither Helen or myself are going to be present, it's going to be the students getting to know each other, to sharing their experiences, sharing their sort of um, their challenges, what they hope to get out of it, etc. We're taking very much a design thinking approach. So they're having to empathize with stakeholders, um, empathize you know, um, and, and, and create sort of solutions. And again, working with each other uh, to do that. 
Critical to me is that it's not a, a global north providing a solution to the global south. So we're saying it's got to be a frugal solution, something that is equip, you know, able to um, be, be a sort of simulated in, in the global south. But more importantly, what does the global south have to offer the global north? So coming from the, from the global south to, to the global north, not as it usually is the, the other way around. I can see it um, being huge benefits for all. You know, it might not work first time, but I think really first, it, it is going to, for all students, where, you know, whatever backgrounds, et cetera, global south, global north, whatever, it is going to be a huge increase in their cultural competencies and capital. It's going to get rid of a lot of the misconceptions they might actually have. Said it to my students last week, I actually don't care if they don't come out with a report. For them, the biggest learning is actually going to be engaging in the process. Um, and so they can actually write it up as a reflective portfolio rather than a sort of an evidence driven report. It's up to them. So I think it is the start of a global journey. The talk about today has huge potential. You know, you can link it in with lots of other initiatives. So social justice, education, sustainable development, transnational education opportunities, workplace learning, uh, community based learning, global south, decolonization whatever you really want to think about it. My own institution has really bought into the capstone concept. So the requirement for a final year project is now changed. It's now a capstone project. It still can be a traditional research project, but programs have to offer a portfolio of opportunities that enable students to choose where they really want to go. And again, I'm doing a lot of work with universities around the world who are again, buying into the capstone concept and developing capstones, uh, portfolios of capstones uh, for themselves. So I think these you know, give me phenomenal benefits for students. We're going to fully realize the transformational and translational potential of capstones for all students. It is going to, you know, address equity, diversity, inclusion and awarding gaps. And really what we really want to make for students to equip them with the competencies so, so they can become change makers to really make a difference in the world whatever career they want to go on to and finally sort of the shameless plug as some of you know i do go around offering workshops on capstone seminars etc if you would like me to do that for you they're free of charge please uh contact me thank you